Hey guys, hi and uh, welcome to the video. My name is Somil Shah and you know, I have been working with Elasticsearch since past a year and uh, recently I created a lot of course for you guys uh, where I taught about from zero to hero in Elasticsearch where we covered how to write ingestion queries for Elasticsearch. We also uh, created a course called as uh, from zero to hero in writing Elasticsearch queries where I talked about the nested Boolean queries and all sort of, you know, uh, queries in Elasticsearch. Now, one part that I haven't covered uh, so far and I would like to cover in this is basically writing script queries uh, using painless language. Elasticsearch, suffer, uh, Elasticsearch sorry, supports a scripting language, which is also called as pain, painless language. Uh, uh, so let's uh, explore a little bit about that. And I would be very happy to, this is a very beginner, beginner tutorial for painless scripting language in Elasticsearch. So let me kind of walk you through that. A little bit information about myself for people who are watching me for the first time. Uh, hey guys, I'm Samil. Uh, I did my bachelor's in electronic engineering. I uh, graduated in the year 2016. Uh, completed my double masters uh, in electrical and computer in 2020. Now I work as a software engineer. I teach people on YouTube and you know, I love to just uh, learn about new technologies in my free time. Uh, in this course uh, or in this tutorial, I would say the End goal here is to, for you guys is to learn about the painless scripting language in Elasticsearch. All the material is there, so how would uh, you know? I would try to put this PowerPoint as well, so you could uh, you know uh, try it out, or if you want to review that, so do that as well. Let's go to the first slide. Painless is a simple, secure scripting language designed specifically for the use with Elasticsearch. It is a default scripting language for Elasticsearch and can safely be used for inline and stored script for jump starts into painless. You can use painless anywhere in the scripts used in Elasticsearch. Painless provides fast performance. Painless scripts can run several faster than the other alternatives. Optional typing variables and parameters can be explicitly typed or dynamically defined a type. Syntax that extends a subset of Java syntax to provide additional scripting language features. And of course, optimization de uh, designed specific specifically for Elasticsearch scripting. The in order to write painless script language in Elasticsearch, uh, uh, you follow a template like this. So you have a script tag, and you have three three components in that. One is the language. Second is the source. Third is the parameter. Language, if you do not specify by default, it's painless. Source. Uh, or ID. So what does that mean is source is where you write your source code where you would write your painless language ID if you have a stored script already in a cache you could load the script Parameters are basically passing values into the function Let's put the first document on the index and let's learn about it So uh, I'm gonna you know we can we can basically as you can see we can then construct a simple script query that operates on the field in this case, I have a field called my field. It's a JSON document has a value five. It's an integer. Uh, so what I'm saying here is we can then construct a script that operates on the field and run evaluate the script as a part of the query. The following query uses script fields, parameters of search API to retrieve the script's valuation. Therefore, a lot of happening. A lot of uh, therefore a lot happening here. But we'll break down into components and understand them individually. For now. Uh, you need to understand that the script takes my field and operates on it. Okay, lemon language. Okay, now uh, starts the actual demo stuff, right? So we have all of these uh, fancy stuff. So first of all, get underscore cat underscore indices. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flush all the index that I'm not using. So first thing forward, before starting this tutorial series, I'm gonna say, hey, just delete all of these indexes. I mean, I'm just deleting this index. Now let's start, man. So first of all, I'm inserting a document with a with a with a key called my field and a value as five. Okay, as a value, uh, says acknowledgement true. That means the document was created successfully. You could search, and sure enough, your document comes up. Here, what happens is, as you can see, I'm providing a script field, and I'm providing a you know a, fee, a name fee, a name here. So as I said, every script has three components: source parameter and language is default to painless. If you do not provide, it's fine. So here I'm saying that, hey, uh, if you can see when I search, the field name is my field. I'm saying that, hey, 
give me a document so whenever you return a document i want to go inside the my field dot value means take the value of whatever it has and then multiply with a params dot multiplier that is how you define variables in elastic search so this script takes a variable called multiplier the default value is supposed to be 2 and what i'm saying is hey just multiply uh, whenever you you know search some stuff multiply that value with 2 okay so if you do that you get my double field and then you get an array of value 2 so what we did is basically we multiplied and then we returned the value okay so far so good what you understood here is basically this whatever you write here inside the script that would be returned as a field and the value would be returned in the source so i never said return something but it works fine okay now uh once that is done uh let's just uh, understand this a little bit though it works uh, this solution is pretty inflexible and we have to modify the script source to change the multiplier and Elasticsearch has to recompile the script every time that multiplier changes. This is important to know. Instead of hard coding the values, use the name parameter to make the script flexible and also reduce compilation on compilation time. When the script runs, you can now make changes on the multiplier uh, parameter without Elasticsearch compiling it. So initially before even this script that i showed you i actually had just a number two so what i was saying is instead of doing that you should always define the variable and then pass that so it's a little you know it's a little better uh, approach okay so that is what this slide says oh uh, this is a little uh, uh, let's let's just read it for example most of the context you can compile up to 75 scripts per five minutes by default for in just context the default script Compilation rate is unlimited, but you can change these settings dynamically by settings. So there's a setting if you want, you could change it. Uh, so this is just some information about that part. Now on the screen, what you see, uh, so now here you see two queries here, okay? So on the right hand side and on the left hand side. On the left hand side, as you can see, I have a return statement, okay? And I'm saying doc dot that the, the field in which I wanna use, and I'm saying dot value. And then I'm basically multiplying with that a variable. On the right hand side over here where my mouse is, we are saying we are doing the same thing. But did you observe some changes here? Uh, so yeah, let me say, here you specify language, here I did not specify. By default is painless, why do you have to specify? So let's just take that off, it's a better approach, right? Other thing if you observed, semicolon, semicolon is not there because by default it's an inline statement, it's gonna return. So you don't have to specify the return statement. You know, it's understood by Elasticsearch. So a couple of uh, takeaways here, okay? A, a better way to write things. So now what I would like to explain you is how you, let's say you wrote the script. So every time you, you send the script, it's gonna compile, it's gonna be stored in the cache. There is a way in which you could provide the script. You could store the script on Elasticsearch and just use the script. Samuel, what do you saying, man? I don't understand. Okay, it's fine. I'll make it understand. So this example right here, I'm saying that I have a script, Elasticsearch, uh, which is called Calculate Score. What it does is basically it says, hey, math.log, take the score and multiply by two and, you know, params.modify. So it does some operation. I'm just doing some mathematical operation. So I'm saying, hey, can you store this on your uh, cache? So now we say, hey, okay, I'll store it in the cache. You could retrieve the script using the get command and you can see the code is right there. But if you just want to use the script in your query, all you could do is in the script tag, there's something called ID. You provide the name of the script that you are stored in the Elasticsearch and then just pass the parameter that you wish to pass. In this case, I'm saying, hey, just pass a variable my modifier, which was defined and uh, the value is two. So you could do that. You definitely can. You can delete as, as well. I can delete the script. Okay, so let's go back to the example. So to use a stored script, this is exactly what I just showed you, uh, you know, just an example, showed you about the delete. Now I would like to show you about something about update statements and stuff like that. Let me talk a little bit about that. Oftentimes you wanna add things to your Elasticsearch document, such as if it's an array, you wanna add things into an array. You wanna delete things in an array. You wanna see a certain word contains in an array. If yes, do something else, do something, change the value delete the value, add a new key value. You wanna do all those operations on Elasticsearch. Well, Elasticsearch does offer all of that, so let's learn about that. Hey, so in this case, 
for this example, I've taken a nice example for you. I'm indexing a document uh, which has a number counter one and, a, and an array called tags and has a uh, the default value red. Okay, so so far nothing complicated. What I would do is I would just like to show you how it looks like. So if I search, you have the document, nothing important. Now here what I said is, hey, using script language, I'm saying, hey, could you uh, do this for me? Source dot counter, take the default value of the counter and increment the counter with what the value four. So this is a variable. So it's gonna be the value is one, one plus four is five. As soon as I run the script, Elasticsearch would do the computation. And when you search, the value should be five. Similarly, you have the ability to add inside an array. So you can say, I'm going inside the source attribute here, going inside the tags inside that. You could use the dot operator or the bracket. Since it's an array, I could use the dot add method, right? And I wanna add something. So I'm saying that param, that's a variable and the variable name is tag. So I would like to add a variable called blue into it. You could do that when you retrieve the data back. Blue is already there in Elasticsearch. Well, not only that, it allows you to remove documents. So similarly, you could say dot remove and you could remove stuff as well. So once this script is run, if I run it again, blue is removed. Hey, not only that, you could add a new key value pair. For example, I'm saying source dot new field and I'm giving it a value. See how I'm giving it a value inside of quotes. Remember, it's a string. So, or you could store the script as well. So if I do this, Okay, and if I search again, we have a new field, amazing. Well, not only that, if you like to remove that new field, you could definitely use that using the word remove. And if I search again, the document is removed. Hey, this is a complex operation. What I'm doing is now, if you wanna delete based on some condition, so I'm saying, hey, check out check out the, the array tags and check if it contains this variable uh, params tags, so that's a variable. So the I'm gonna pass a variable. So check out that variable. If it is there, then ctx.op delete. That means, hey, can you delete that? Else, set it to none. And then I'm passing this as green. So as you know, green is not there. So it's gonna go to the none object. Let's try to run this. Hopefully, that is this is what you expect. Uh, let's see what happened. So we said, okay, go to the source tags. If it contains the word tags, which is the value is green. So we are saying that, hey, if it contains the word green in an array, right? Then I wanna do like delete, else just say none. In this case, as you can see, green was not there. It went to the none, so the ops was none. That means do nothing. Well, all of this complicated stuff you could do with Elasticsearch. So these are the, just the slides that I just explained to you what, what I was talking about, deleting documents and all of that. Well, that's pretty much it. I think this is a very good example where you got a nice idea about the scripting language in Elasticsearch. I would try to create more tutorials where I would be guiding you where, how to do some parsing on date time object, if it's a string date, how you could parse using the script queries, something even more than that. For example, uh, let's say you wanna see how many times a particular record was viewed. We could add script queries dy dynamically, which is doing that. So all of that, it's gonna be fun. Well, I hope you did enjoy this. If you did enjoy, I would simply, uh, I just want you guys to uh, simply show some love by liking the video and share this video to the people whom you think it will be important. Once again, thank you for love, support, keep learning, keep smiling, and as usual, stay safe. See you guys in the upcoming tutorials.